And now we are going to see how we can uh, pull this information into the app so that we can um, display the version history and also the tricky part, displaying the changes. Now what change from uh, the, 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 in the latest two versions, for example, we have version four and three, and we can see that the version three had suitcat blah, and the version four has suitcat blah, blah. So this change needs to be somehow highlighted. So to do that, I will have to um, create a new screen where we display these, um, yeah, the history, the version history. So let's think about it. Let's say that we want to go with this icon to the um, to this item, and uh, let's say do we have another icon called for our uh, version history? That one over there. As that doesn't matter. So this icon should also create our item and should navigate us to another screen. So let's create another screen, uh, another blank screen. This will be our version history. This one needs now a vertical gallery, but let's write gallery and grab a blank one. So this one will have our uh, collection schools history. And I want here to have a couple of labels as well. This item. You know what? Let's do it uh, a bit faster. And I'm going to grab this gallery and copy it and paste it in here. I don't want these buttons. And I want this to be collection schools history. And that should work as well. Okay, so there we go. We have our gallery here. Let's make it a bit bigger. And this should be the width. Let's say parent that width. And that should be okay. So this one as well. The width should be parent that width. Okay, so here's our um, version history. What we don't see here is the ID of that um, of that school. So we want here as text, not this item dot ID, but the item dot school ID. No? So in this case, it's, it's always shows seven. The problem is if I go and edit another um, item. So let's grab here ID number two, which is another school, and say I want to edit this. Mm, let's add here another subject, Berlin test, and another maybe teacher. Click save. So what this is going to do is um, going to create in the school history another entry here which as we see it's school number two and the id is number two because in our main list that is uh, school number two has id number two so um, in the app when i go um, to the version history let's say of the school number one that was not the right one did i click here okay i think i have not changed this yet Yes, so this needs to go to the um, version history screen. So when I go to the version history of that school, I see here not only ID number seven, but also ID number two. So it doesn't filter based on the school that you chose. No? So what we need to do here is, let's bring here another button so that we can go back. And this button is going to bring us back to the screen we came from. So when I click here, I want to set the item, this item, I want to navigate to version history. And 
when I am here, I want this uh, gallery we have here our school um, to be filtered based on the school ID. So I want to filter this gallery where the um, school ID is equal to the item that we have dot ID uh, because that is the same one. And he is now complaining, I think, because one is text and one is a number. Let's see. Yes, text and number. So what we can do here is we can say value and that should do the trick actually, but I think we don't have any history for that. Let's see, what do we have here for something? Yes, here we have the, the four changes, the latest item. And I think also um, the second school, we have one. No? As you can see in the history, we have four times number seven and one number two. So that's why we see this information here. Okay, so now if I go to my school number, uh, I think it was number seven here, where we have the most of the changes. So here we can see um, that some changes have happened, but it's not that easy to distinguish. So for example, here, bio biology was added and also this, uh, this here was uh, the new teacher. So we need to find a way to distinguish or to, to, to highlight these changes. So what we can do here is, for example, let's check the number of students. So we can change here the um, font weight. For, for now, font, the font weight for this label is normal. What you can say here or what you can use here is the width, um, width scope. So we can say width um, and initialize a new uh, local variable, which is then um, named lock, and then I will call it uh, changes. And with the colon, then I can use the last n function to uh, grab the last n elements, uh, in my case will be the last two elements, from the collection that of my choice. So my, the collection will be the collection school's history, where we have this um, data that we see below in the gallery. And I want the last two elements. Uh, so I'm going to close the curly brackets and do a comma. So now I can continue with this function and say um, if the first item in my lock changes that um, what where are we here number of students is not equal this item dot number of students and the last item from lock changes dot id is equals the this item dot id so this needs to be put in an end function so that it can be um, compared so we need both to um, to be equals true then so if this is true then um, I want this to be font weight bold otherwise it should be font weight uh, normal close this parenthesis and close the one for the width so uh, we cannot see any changes here because uh, let me check. We need to enter here another label. So this will be ID of these items. We'll have item one, two, three, four. So actually, um, what is comparing is the two last items, so number three and four. So what I need to do to test this is I'm going to create a change into this uh, school here. And I'm going to say that the number of students now has um, more. I'm going to click save. And I'm going to go back. So we can see here that the history school, or school's history, we have here a new version with a much more number of students for um, this item with ID 7. 
and here um, it has changed as well. So now if I go into the version history, I can see that the uh, version before, because these are the last two versions of, um, of the gallery, of that item, um, this change has happened. So it's highlighted. So let's take a look on the logic. I need to go to the first item of that gallery. So um, now in this scope, we define the function. No? We have the log change and the value is the table, which is our collection of school history with uh, only uh, two elements. So as you can see here, we have only these last two elements, ID five and six. And this is saved now in this log changes. Uh, this, this part here, you can also have it in this first and last. So it's just for making it a bit easier to understand. So the magic happens in inside of this one. So if the first item of uh, this collection here, so if the first item, um, the number of students is different than this item where we are now, the number of students, and also the ID is the same, then make it bold. Uh, and that's that's all that happens. So this is it's, uh, comparing now these two items and because the values are not dif uh, are different, it's bold. Otherwise it will be uh, not bold. Uh, so like, uh, and, that, and that's something that you can implement in, in the rest of the fields as well. So just, just make sure that you uh, put it in on, the, on the each of the fields. And um, yeah, you can use it, uh, for example, um, I used it here in the font weight, but you can use it also in the text and maybe showcase a different text or maybe you can use it in the color or um, I don't know what else, font style, maybe you can put it in italic or underlined. Um, you can uh, change the font size. You can use it whatever you want. No? And this is the magic of uh, comparing two or more elements in one gallery. I hope this made sense. I hope you liked it. I hope it helps you. It, I know it was a bit too much and also the video is uh, pretty long. I might think of uh, sweet cutting in half. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. I hope uh, you liked it. If you uh, did so, please make sure that you give a like to the video and that you subscribe to the channel. And um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you.